Hey guys, RCT3 Crashes 100 here, and I have another first for the channel, my first purchase from Appmex. Yes, Appmex being a major coin dealer in the United States, and I decided that I would buy something from them. Really impressed with the postage, even internationally. The postage was reasonable, the customs fees were reasonable. The only restriction is there is a minimum order limit, but that is fine, as you will see. I have ordered something, a coin type that I quite like personally. So without further ado, let's begin. I'm just open the parcel with my Swiss Army knife. Now this isn't going to work like this, hang on. Just going to find the entrance, there we go. Come through there, just like that. Uh, yes. I guess we go through here too. Riveting commentary, I know. Absolutely fantastic. I want to really. Uh, there we go. Let's try and cut this down here. So the flap. Still trying to get it done. Um, don't worry about that. I'm still doing this. Let's try and just force it open. Not exactly helping, but I guess it is. <laughs> UPS does a brilliant job at patching their stuff up. Alright, there we go. Completely ruined the parcel. I was hoping I could actually keep the box, but okay. This Swiss Army knife just isn't going to work, is it? Let's just cut through here. There we go. I need a better blade, to be honest, for opening parcels. Especially since I'm going to be doing a lot more of them on the channel, hopefully. So, uh, yeah, keep watching. Alright, there we go. That's that dealt with, at least there. Let's open up more. Let's see what we can find. Ooh, hello. So it's come in this Atmex Investments You Hold box. Very nice. I hear these tend to come with larger orders, but mine isn't exactly very big, as you'll soon find out. So yeah, I'll keep hold of that. That'll be handy for storing some of my collection as it grows bigger. You can see there's some tape here, which I should just be able to cut with my knife again. Just get that open. Alright, let's cut through here just like that. Oh, there we go. And let's take a look inside. So, can you guess what I have ordered yet? Um, a coin that I particularly like? Let's just get behind the foam. Let me just check for the invoice, because they tend to leave that in the box. Uh, nope, there's no invoice actually in here. So, I guess it must have been printed online. It probably was. Right, in that case, inside the box there is a slightly smaller package. Sorry about the zoom. Sorry about the jump cut. Um, I just had something to do. And also I apologise for the zoom. The iPad I'm using for some reason has this as its default when it's maximum zoomed out. I've removed the smaller parcel from the inside of the box and I'm just going to open it off camera and I will bring it back in front of the camera when that is done. One moment. Get this open here, it's just a peel. I will get a better setup in place, I can promise you that. Ah, here's the invoice, it's in this box. It's in a bag, sorry. Let's get rid of that first. There we go. Alright, so the first thing I have ordered which is definitely not the star of the show, is this. There we go. It's just an ordinary Walking Liberty 1917 San Francisco reverse in condition about good. You know, I just bought it for fun. 1917's an early year, and to be honest, it's in better condition than I would expect. So that can go to one side. Move that out of one side. 
Here comes the real star of the show though, the main reason why I love junk silver or constitutional silver as much as I do, and definitely my favourite coin type of all. It is a roll of Walking Liberty half dollars. This is one of my absolute favourite American coins, the design is absolutely beautiful. It's second only to the Morgan in terms of the coins I like the most from America. Um, following the Walking Liberty is the Mercury Dime, and then other coins, so like Wheat Cents, Steel Cents, etc. So yeah, I decided to order this as the bulk of my order. This is a roll of almost uncirculated Walking Liberty coins, $10 in face value. So let's get this open. Just take a quick shot of it there, just for the thumbnail, something like that. Let's begin. We're going to take a look through this live, because this is the first time I've ever done something like this. I am incredibly impressed with the delivery time on these. Atmex does an absolutely fantastic job shipping out internationally. I ordered this from their actual website, so I'm not sure if their eBay store ships out things faster, but yes, Atmex, you have done a fantastic job, and I will definitely be using your services again. So let's get this open. Let's just peel this off. It's almost like looking into a treasure chest or like a blind bag. Other than you know that what's going to be in there, you don't know what years or what varieties you're going to find. I'm a complete newcomer to this, so I might overlook things that you guys recognise. Feel free to tell me about it in the comments section. Yeah, the sticker's kind of getting in the way. There we go. Imagine opening up a coin roll and seeing this as you open it up. That would be heaven i imagine for any coin roll hunter just get this lot off here off the top like that and we're just going to lay them out here i think just like this listen to that sound that is the sound of money here in the uk we don't really have that much constitutional silver or certainly not constitutional silver you can use because of decimalization as a result all the coins were replaced with base metal coins and there never really were any rare metals in there so let's take a look at this. That is 20 that is 20 coins, roughly 7 ounces of silver here in front of us according to Atmex's website. So let's start. Focus. We have a 1942. Let's take a closer look. See if there's any mint mark on there. Might be on the reverse, sorry. Uh that is just a 1942 Pennsylvania, so that's common. Doing this roughly in order. Sorry my hands are so shaky, I am genuinely quite excited to receive these. That is a... I think that's either Denver or San Francisco? That's San Francisco. San Francisco 1940, 1940S. Uh, that is... Let me just take a closer look at that. That is a Denver. Ooh, that's 1945, so we're mostly sticking with 40s for now. Hopefully it'd be nice if we got a 30 or maybe even something older. That's a Pennsylvania. 1943 again. I love the look of these coins. Like, seriously, some of these, I'd argue, are, look even better than uncirculated. Like, look at that shine. 1944. 1944 Pennsylvania. That's another San Francisco. Getting lots of San Franciscos here. And that is a 1942 again. So it's all 40s for now. I don't mind that, but the 1940s are apparently the ones that are more common. This one has quite a large scratch around Liberty's chest. That is a 1945 again. 1945. Keep forgetting that these aren't like British coins where the Reverse and the obverse are the same way around. That's a 1945 Pennsylvania. Or oh, sorry, 19... 1945, yeah. I'm getting quite a few 1945s. I'm doing this completely unscripted, and I am a total amateur if it doesn't show that clear. So another Pennsylvania. Again. That is a 1941. So, again, 1940s, but I think that's a less common year. 
correct me if I'm wrong. This one has a bit of grime on the side, but that's a 1945. So again, it's got a scratch around the top or a bit of worn, worn part there, but otherwise the detail on this is absolutely fantastic. So 1945, Pennsylvania. Nineteen forty three, Pennsylvania, nineteen forty three, getting loads of forty threes. Was this a common year? Tell me in the comments, nineteen forty three, Pennsylvania. That is another San Francisco. Or no, that's Denver. 1940 Denver. Getting down to the last few coins now. 1943. Pennsylvania. This one here is looking a little bit more toned than the others. It's a Pennsylvania again. And it is... Ooh, 1941. Okay. I am a newcomer to this if it isn't clear yet. So, yeah, as again, as I say. 1943. Pennsylvania. 1944, again got a very big stain here on the side, that's Pennsylvania, I don't think the camera picked that up but there's a bit of a blotch on the side of that coin by the eagle's right wing, 1942, Pennsylvania, here we come down to our last few coins, we're down to three left so we counted 17, 1945, Pennsylvania. This one has a bit of a black toning around the edge. A little bit of grime, but not too bad. 1942. Pennsylvania. And last but not least, to finish off the set we have today. 1947. Pennsylvania. So that is the complete set of Walking Liberty Half Dollars, including the 1917 on the very end, which is about good. The rest are about uncirculated or AU, AG and AU. So yeah, in conclusion, I think that this was an excellent purchase and one which I think has really kicked off my silver collection properly. So I will definitely be using Atmex again whenever I can. So top marks, Atmex. You've made me really impressed as an international buyer i will definitely be using you again anyway i suppose that's about it for the video i'm rct3 crashes 100 over and out